Hey, I'm Brad from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm going to show you how to make a custom cutting board from scrap offcuts and leftover wood. I'm also going to show you an important step that most people leave out. I started with a piece of walnut. It's about 12 feet long and two and three quarters of an inch wide. I got this from a local mill workshop for free because it was an offcut from their milling operations. The first thing I did was figure out how much I could get out of the board and how much I needed to work around the big knots that were in the piece. So I marked out where the knots were, keeping in mind how the grain was flowing. Since this is an edge grain board, having straight grain lines on these edges will make for a more seamless look on the top when it's assembled. I make most of my cutting boards around 16 inches long, so I set up my miter saw stand and adjusted the stop block to 16 and a half inches. This worked out perfect because I was able to get three full cuts from the board before the knot, and I trimmed off the knotty part. Don't need that. After that, I got three more full cuts from the rest of the board for a total of six parts. These boards had one flat side from the mill workshop, but the rest is rough. I ran the boards through my planer, flipping them over after each pass and lowering that cutter head until I had a smooth and parallel surface on both sides. The stock I started with was about an inch thick, and after the surfacing, I was down closer to around seven eighths. Four of the boards were right at about two and three quarters of an inch thick, and then the other two were from the ends and they had a slight taper on them, making them shorter on one side. I set the table saw fence to just under an inch and a quarter, and I cut each of the full width pieces into two parts. Since I'm making an edge grain board, the width of these pieces will be the thickness of my finished cutting board. If you want a thicker board, then just go ahead and cut these a bit wider. I would have liked to really been around an inch and a half thick, but you gotta work with what you got when you're using scraps. With the main walnut pieces ready, I switched over to the accent woods. I grabbed a rough cut piece of maple, I planed it smooth on both sides. I ripped it on the table saw to the same width as the walnut pieces, and then I turned it on edge and split it into two thinner pieces. I did the same thing with one of the walnut pieces that I had cut earlier, and these will be the accent strips that flank the yellow heart on the finished board. Speaking of the yellow heart, here's the little scrap board I started with. A guy gave me this off cut when I bought a tool from him off of Craigslist. Since I have so little of it, I didn't want to split it on the table saw because you're going to lose an eighth of an inch there just to the sawdust from the blade curve. So instead, I cut it to the size I needed on my bandsaw. I'll be able to use this other piece here in another cutting board later. I wanted the two walnut and the two maple pieces to be a quarter inch thick and then the yellow heart to be a half inch thick when I finished. They were slightly larger than this as I cut them and so I used the planer to get them down to their final sizes. With all the boards cut and prepped, I moved over to the layout. I ended up with nine walnut boards and the maple and the yellow heart accent stripes. I arranged the accents on one side and then I moved over a piece of the walnut to complete the look. Next, I looked over all the boards and I decided what the best show side would be for each piece. There was a little bit of sapwood and some defects here and there, so I flipped those over to the bottom so you wouldn't see them. Now it's time for the glue up. I use parallel clamps, but you can use inexpensive bar clamps or even quick clamps here. After getting my supplies, I stack the boards together and then I flip each one down so the face to get the glue is up. Then I just slather that glue on there and I spread the glue evenly over all the boards. I'm using Type Bond 2, a water resistant glue, versus Type Bond 3, a waterproof glue. I always get asked, why don't you use waterproof glue? And basically, I don't think it's needed. On Type Bond's website, they actually list cutting boards as a recommended use for both of these glues. So if they're cool with it, then I'm cool with it. With the glue spread, I rotate the pieces back into place and line them up and clamp them all together until I get a good glue squeeze out. You can wait about 30 or 45 minutes and come back and scrape off the glue squeeze out at that point, but I don't like setting a timer and having to come back, so I just scrape the excess off with my glue brush and then I wipe the whole thing down with a wet paper towel. I let the glue dry overnight and then I take the boards out of the clamps. There's usually a little bit of dry glue where the clamps were and I knock those pieces off with a scraper or a putty knife. I take one more trip over to the planer to even out any misalignment from the glue up. Once the board is smooth on both sides, I'm done, and it only takes a few light passes to get there. You can see the board here is still almost an inch and a quarter after the whole process, so you're really not taking off a lot. Next, I square up the end of each board on the table saw using my crosscut sled, and I cut it to final length, which here ended up being a smidge under 16 inches. Next up is the edge treatment and the sanding. I used my downdraft sanding table for these steps. I made a version specifically to fit the size of the boards that I built. I used a 16th of an inch roundover bit in my handheld router, and I start with the end grain and then move on to the sides. If you have a router table, this is gonna be much easier, but this trim router is nice and easy to handle. Before sanding, I draw pencil marks on the face of the board. 
This lets me know when I've sanded that very top surface away and that I'm ready for the next grit. I start with 100 grit and I sand the faces of the board and then I raise the board up a little bit higher and I sand the edges right there on the table as well. After 100, I move up to 150 grit and I repeat the same process. Now here's an important step, especially for these edge grain boards. After 150 grit, I spray down the board with water. This raises the grain on the board and it makes it rough to the touch. Basically, you're making all the severed wood fibers from the milling stand up on the board. Wet it down and let it dry. If you skip this step, the first time that you wash your new board, it's going to feel really rough. And if you've gifted this to your old Aunt Betty, she's going to question your woodworking prowess. Don't disappoint Aunt Betty. After it dries, I sand it to 220 grit. Then I use a flexible sanding pad and I smooth up all the edges, making sure everything has got a nice round to it and everything feels smooth. After that, I finish up by hand sanding with 320 and 400 grit paper for that super smooth finish. Now this is everybody's favorite part, oiling the board. This is where it comes to life. I'm using just 100% mineral oil. This is food safe. This is from just any grocery store or large box store. You can get that from. Soak as much as you can on there. I'm gonna put it on here, show you, show you how it comes to life. No narration needed for this part, just sit back and watch this grain start to pop. The final step I'm going to take is to put on a top coat of beeswax and mineral oil blend. I'll have a link down below to what this is. Uh, but this basically gives it some extra protection against the water as well as the beeswax lets you buff it to a nice sheen. The wax is set up. I'm just going to buff this out with a dry shop towel and this is going to look beautiful. There's links down below to all the items I used today, as well as a detailed blog post. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. You can do that right here or below as well. And if you hit that bell, it'll turn on notifications and you'll know every time I post a new video. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.